Good evening, this is Jim Vretos, and welcome again to another Radical Imagination. I'm a sociologist at John Jay College. We're here every Sunday evening, and I'm here today again with my wonderful co-host, Michael Pilius, philosopher at Long Island University. We had planned to have Stanley Aronowitz, another co-host, and Cornell West here today. Unfortunately, Stanley wasn't able to make it, but we are rescheduling that. So we look forward to having both of them here very soon in our studio so that you'll be able to uh, listen to their thoughts and we talk more about Stanley's work in particular and this great book that he wrote in 1989. No, 1990. Excuse me, excuse me. 2006. 2006, the, yeah, I'm even sorry. Even though it's an extension of an article from yes. 1986 in okay, the Progressive, that's what we're about is, the, is the party over? Right. Is the party <laughs> no, over? No, question no, the party's mark. not over. We're, it's a new party, though, and the <laughs> right. book is called <laughs> Left Turn. Yeah. And, and Michael was just reminding me that this, we're in now our seventh month here yes. on the Radical Imagination. Absolutely. And, and time flies. And yes. I'm just so proud and happy um, that we are on this seventh month. It's been fascinating, it's been interesting. I thank you so much for yeah. your wonderful contributions and, and help in all this. And so thank let's you. carry on the tradition. Yes. Because in we'll, fact, we'll have, yeah. Stanley's work really is the inspiration behind this yeah. show. The radical imagination, and if there's any um, man that has a radical imagination, it's certainly Stanley. Certainly um, the one that's continued in his entire life. Has this is, this is over 50 years of a, uh, you know. Stayed true to Yes, it. right, has stayed true, and in my, my, um, my um, um, opinion and, uh, and judgment, well thought out judgment, one of the very few who remain faithful to the tradition Absolutely. of the new left with a critical consciousness and consistently changed depending on the, the circumstances, but never lost the radical imagination as we go forward. And still today, given you know that he is now 83 years old, is still fighting, ready for the good fight, et cetera. He, so, he yeah, certainly right, is, right, and right. shout out to Stanley. We'll yes. see you very, yes. very soon. Yes. with Cornell on the show. Yes, we're hoping in June, and I might want to add that since you announced this is the seventh month, that the first show here was a homage to Absolutely. Stanley's work with, where, Cornell. with Cornell and two of our leading left right. political intellectuals, if not the two most visible and most public of our intellectual class. Only Noam Chomsky, I guess, could compete, and it's a different different animal, Chomsky, in a way, well, rather we'll, than we'll the practical. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get him here Another to fit the triad. Old. Another 87, I think, 86 or 87, well, right? Well, we've got right. a ways to go. Right. We, yes, that. indeed. Cornell right. does too, but right. Um, That's right. But listen, okay. tell us about this monumental work right. that you've known Stanley now for many, many years. You've taught with him. You work with him. You lecture right. with him. Um, you're his confidant. You, you <laughs> know about his thoughts, his work here. What is this book about? Okay, well, maybe we could situate it. Obviously, this year we're in the, you know, the spectacle of a presidential election and the Sandernistas, you know, <laughs> that we now okay. call the, the Bernie Sanders movement, if okay. you will, the so-called political revolution, has raised, again, expectations of maybe a new political future. Well... For the left. For the left, right. if you will. Um, Part of the problem that both, I, I think Stanley, you know, would put his finger on it by saying that part of the problem is most of this will be absorbed by a centrist or really even right of center Democratic Party because people have nowhere to go, really, in terms of organization. And that certainly seems yeah, to be right. happening as we speak. Yes, and unfortunately, um, the Green Party, which does have some ideas and is an ecological you know, party, and you know, mm -hmm. which is obviously our major issue and something beyond you know, our at least immediate control these, you know, uh, at this moment, it does not really have a force in the electoral political scene and does not really have a force as an alternative party except in a few local uh, areas. So I think working you know, families, yeah, working party families. Well, another. so that's another one. Although I would have a problem with the working families party because they seem to be a shill 
or at least this is what this book would say uh, for the Democratic Party in some and, ways. And certainly, um, yeah. as you know, yeah. we've we've recently on this show had uh, represented from the Communist Party USA, yes. Yes. as well as the Revolutionary Communist Party. Right. Carl Dick. Both. So yes. again, we have these. What would you say? outlier sort of parties yes. floating around We have here. some marginal phenomena, marginal phenomena. At, this, at this point okay. that has maintained itself for long periods of time. Um, you know, and, and as critical organizations have been very, you know, anti-capitalist at base, this is right. again a problem with the Sanders campaign, at least in my mind, and, and certainly I'm, I'm sure if Stanley and Cornell were here, even though Cornell has been offering his uh, expertise to he the has. Sanders campaign, would agree this is not an anti-capitalist movement. And, you know, in, in, in a way, it's, it's a kind of return, if you will, to the first years or at least some principles of a new deal. So in a way, it's Absolutely. a retro, you know, 80 years ago kind of phenomena, 80, 84 years ago, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Absolutely. So we have, you know, uh, a long cycle that is being sort of repeated here, ironically, uh, by the Sanders campaign. And this does not seem to be part of any kind of mainstream, midstream, or really to a degree very little radical discussion about this because the left has, I think, been out of the, 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 um, uh, the spirit of the times, if you will, in an active way, that any little blimp on the, on the screen, you know, such as Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, and now the Sanders phenomena, right. is, is worth, they grab immediately, or the left and, and will so grab immediately. The Sanders yeah. phenomenon, yeah. as you put it, yeah. um, the spectacle, yes. is, is, in your mind, basically about completing the New Deal. Right. Yes, or FDR's returning to the New Deal since it. it's been dismantled right. since 1996 by the welfare, welfare reform bill of, given to us by, you know, our possible future president's husband during his uh, <laughs> right. period, you know, or as we had the show last last week, my turn, it's my her turn. turn now to, exactly. you know, continue this kind of neoliberal uh, framework that uh, her husband was the best. I mean, as the saying goes, the Democrats you know, can get things done that the Republicans can't in terms of what capitalism needs at a certain moment. And this is very, very to it. save capitalism exactly. at every stage or really even uh, bolster it, you know, which Absolutely. is interesting. Bill now, Clinton, by the way, was called the, the greatest uh, Republican president ever by one of the leading Wall Street brokerage houses. Mm -hmm. So, to, you know. We understand. We go, go, we understand. Yeah. Now, now, Stanley mm -hmm. no. was certainly part of the new left. Right? Would you, and one of the I think Stanley was one of the architects, architects of the new of left, the as we know. Statement. In 1962, with uh, Casey and Tom Hayden, Absolutely. Al Huber, you know, Stanley was in the room when the Port Huron statement was drafted and contributed to it. And, and he's uh, had some misgivings since. So this is not about a resurrection of the new left, or is it? Or no, I don't think this is no. a, like a resurrection of the new left. I think this is a very different kind of framework where the the, the, way? the left, well, I think part of it is is that, you know, we have to take into account, you know, that we now live in an increasing proletarianization. It is no longer just a question of white, middle class, highly educated, alienated people, and a, quote, working class as a kind of, you know, potential coalition or student movements. Today, the war is on almost everybody except the one-tenth of one percent. You know, we have a new, new kind of war against the middle class. And what we've lost um, in the last 20 years, if you will, during the rise of technological capital and this kind of takeover by the generation of Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, the Apple computer, Silicon you know, constant Valley. texting, seal, Silicon Valley and Silicon Alley elites that we, we now li are living in an increasing proletarianization that everybody is really now without, even though you may own your apartment or your ha house uh, to a degree, you are still really without property because we don't make anything anymore. Is, is we there don't any have any kind analogy of analogy you know, to yeah, any other yeah, yeah. historical period in American history? That it gets us close to what we're getting, what you're talking about, what we're experiencing Well, now. I mean, perhaps at one level the narrative might be <laughs> that the 30s are before us, but in a very different kind of form. Just you know, we're living very through a new. really very diff difficult mm -hmm. period of a depression. You know, we have Absolutely. a whole generation now of economists who are very easily spin language, right? We're in a recession. <laughs> we're in a stock market correction. 
we're in a stock market, you know, um, uh, 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 bear market. Mm -hmm. We have these kind of terminologies, credit cycles, and all of this. But it seems to me that since 2008, in particular, and maybe and going back further to the dot com bust at the turn of the century, that we are now living in an increasingly depressive economy, an economy that is more reliant upon um, contingent labor what is yeah. you know now officially called the precariat that okay. most people even with work <laughs> are living in very precarious situations we have to remember statistically that only 30 35 percent of people actually do have pensions you know mm -hmm. that social security even though intended as a as a pension is not enough to live on it's mm -hmm. enough to buy prescription drugs for most Pretty people much. and that's yeah. about it so we're living in this era of where not only at the economic level but also at the social and psychological level is a, what i would call i mean you know, stanley doesn't use this term but i think he you know we we probably would agree the age of depression we're and really living increasing traumatized traumatized right um, yep Culture With, environment. Without being aware of it, this is the interesting thing. Going we're now the, living. We're now me, living in a very that. traumatized culture, but people don't want to face the levels of their trauma. And as you know, you know, and in, in I'm sure your work and your work with, you know, and in interviews with Gilligan and Phelps and other people that you've had on this show, that unless you understand trauma, there's really no meaning. You know, that meaning really comes out of trauma. Transformation comes out of trauma. Where is so that going to be structured? And now we're, where will it go? Yeah, yeah. Now we're living in this era, if you will, of where everything is numbed, right? Almost a, a, a zombie-like existence. You know, it is wired constantly in which, you know, the experience of alienation, traumatized relations, you know, even though we have, you know, huge events that are trauma, you know, trauma producing. Titillating such, events. Know, titillating events, as well yes. as, you know, these tragic events such as New Hope and, you know, shootings at malls and, you know, things that obviously a Trump has, you know, capitalized on, you know, and, and uh, you know. But the, we go on from one right. of those events to the right. next, and right. for that right. 15 minutes we're focused and then... So, we're on to so a else. very different phenomena is at work. Now, mm. part of the problem, at least what I've, I've seen, and, and I think this is one of the reasons Stanley wrote the book, uh, you know, called Left Turn, Forging a New Political Future, is that there are no organizations for which anger, rage, <laughs> right, as an emotion, or to kind of begin to destroy in the positive sense of destroy these levels of resistance to understanding how traumatized and alienated we really are, that we do not have political structures available. That will positively, yeah. we yes. certainly yeah. have the have, yes. neo cryptic yes. crypto no, no, fascists of course, of course. that will channel no. it. When I say in, we, I mean the left. Understand. I'm sorry. So yeah, the left, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, certainly yeah, the, left, the yeah. democratic. There's yeah. no right. real right. viable hope of that ever happening. Right. In the Republican Party, certainly at this point. Right. And the Democratic Party is also co-opted by big money and yes. big business and, and financial interests. So very little hope there also of creating the sort of right. change Stanley is talking about. Yes, absolutely. And as I, I mentioned earlier, this is one of the few books that really tries to address the, per, the problem from the anti-capitalist perspective, that unless you see capitalism as a system, right? And, you know, whatever term we want to use, I like the term that we live in a transnational garrison state, mm. <laughs> you know, globally at this point, that mm. capitalism is no longer just U.S. imperialism. It's a, it's a globalized you know, thing and, and, you know, has created the syndrome of Tina, there is no alternative, which is a syndrome which I think contributes to people's lack of experience with trauma and feeling how it really alienated they are. That yeah. Stanley is one of the few that will, you know, really posit this in terms of this is a, a result and symptoms of capital and capitalism at this point, and that we need to address it from the standpoint of an anti capitalist party and formation. Right? Party for, no, and, no, and, no, and we'll no. get back to yeah, the trauma sure. and work with sure. Gilligan because this is sure. fascinating yeah. stuff. Yeah. Tell us about the role of the state. Is that, Stanley is sort of given up on that as an entity yes. to bring about yes. the good life, peace, harmony, right. justice, right. so on. Wherever well, this, the state yeah, is yeah. beyond 
help at this point. Is that correct? Right. I, I think that the state and bringing in the logic of the state and where we are vis-a-vis -vis the state today only can lead to, at best, piecemeal reform because and they, mitigation. Because the garrison capitalists right. have captured it. They've captured it. And there's... Right. Right. End game, that's it. Right. Ball game over. Right. It is not like we need dual power at this point. We can think about dual power in the sense of, you know, the state can help at certain levels in terms of maybe small mitigations, you know. The if enough then, people get on the street right, there right. or exactly. make enough fuss or exactly. this and that. Exactly. Possibly the, the sort yeah. of incremental change. Yes. But nothing fundamentally yeah. revolutionary yes. uh, Yes. Uh, what will happen. Yes, here. and the hard work is building the new formation. You okay, know, and this is something that um, we've been doing. We we're trying to do this with this program in terms of bringing on absolutely. multiple guests. I mean, one of the impetuses not only is a homage to Stanley's work and to his very long, you know, and fruitful and highly productive career, but also to build an appar apparatuses, frameworks for people to really have discussion. To, you know, to disseminate. We also have taught through the Institute of the Radical Imagination many courses that are offered in what we call the Saturday Critical Thought Series. Okay. So we, we see this as, you know, in, in, to use Gramsci's language, the war of position, that we really are in a, a moment of where we are trying to position ourselves um, both in the educational institutions, because this is a war of education, as you well know, mm -hmm. as a professor and, uh, right. you know, uh, activist. And uh, it is the also media. at the same time a kind of, yes, with the media, a war of maneuver. We need more and more outreach and audience where people can discuss these things. Alternative and institutions. Yes, yes. Or so or as formations. You know, and a perfect point. example of why we need the education is the word socialist is used with Bernie Sanders. And we don't know, <laughs> you know, how people are taking up this word, what it really means. Because, again, we live in a very ahistorical period where people don't understand the socialist tradition. And, and what is Bernie yeah. Sanders ultimately? Right. But, you know, I, I mean, you know. As Stanley look, has said, there's thing. nothing yeah. socialist about no, him. Yes, exactly. Sense. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and we yeah. need to maybe little yeah. flesh that out a little bit. Why he, he has called himself... A social democrat. A democratic right. socialist, socialist, yeah. Right, right. right. So right. what does that mean within I mean, within independent Stanley's in his party affiliation, right. now being absorbed very interestingly by the Democratic Party. I and mean, probably we, going to be a supporter of, of yes, Clinton. Yes, of course. I mean, I, I would give you, uh, you know, very good odds. You know, five will get you ten on okay. an easy uh, easy. All the drachmas that he's in, do, your, in your pocket. All the drachmas in my pocket <laughs> okay. from back in the 80s. That's yes. a, just an inside. We're both <laughs> right. Greek. The Greek. Right, right, anyway. Right. anyway, but, uh, you know, to go back to uh, yes. the kind of Sanders thing is that this becomes a, a moment in which, you know, uh, the need need for alternative political formations is absolutely crucial. And because you know? more yeah, apparent yeah, because yeah. here is perhaps the, the most progressive of, uh, of, of candidates that could really run within the Democratic Party now being shown with all the millions of young people and so on and the, and the money he's been able to mm -hmm. get the, the, so on. It hasn't happened. He's he's been overwhelmed by the establishment. He'll correct? be interiorized by the system exactly. itself. So this now is this part is of the problem. You know that Stanley right. wants to break up in this book to go back to the left turn. Wants to break up the mentality, if you will, right. that somehow the. Um, exterior will be dependent on the interior. You know that you have to build a whole new party formation you know, to confront and these kind of exactly. moments and have these structures available somewhat to it. And that's where the real hard work is. And, because and Stanley if, would say, yeah, yeah. I told you so, yes, but here's the move. Right, here's right. the moment now. Right. So that's where we're at. Right. All right, so or here's the In the, the vernacular, moment. what else is new? So what right? else is new? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I could have told it's you this a long thing. time ago. Yes, right. exactly. So, you know, we have this going on. And the thing about Sanders is, as we know, he's not going to go out and say, I want to form a democratic socialist party, no. right? <laughs> he's not going to do that. So he's not going to say, you know, um, um, you know uh, it's time for a completely what? new political formation because he's going to be in, inside the Democratic but, Party. But and we if, know, let's yeah, just yeah. Okay. Back, let's yeah. imagine yeah. here, yes. since we, this is the <laughs> yeah. radical right. message, right. imagine he does that. Imagine that he's serious. Now what? What would Stanley do? Would he... 
comes in. Okay, all right. No, I, I don't think see... so because no? again, at the base, the <laughs> the radical, the radical anti-capitalist is not there really in a sense. You know, uh, you know. Remember, listen. Bernie Sanders is a populist candidate. He may be left of center as a populist, but it's the, still the same logic of Occupy Wall Street. It's an ideology of economic determinism. I'm using a phrase of Stanley's that he coined in his, um, you know, in um, um, a, a recent series of articles that he did, that we live under this ideology, the Marx, Marxist tradition. We always say, oh, the ruling class controls everything. Well, again, what else is new? We don't talk about cultural transformation. We don't talk about uh, the, the but possibility. But be fair about it, Bernie yeah. goes part of the way with his, you know, rants and ravings about the billionaire classes. But yes. then he doesn't. Yes, but that's, right. Right. that's precisely the that's point. It. It's, it's about the class and it's about work but, okay. as usual. So no one is really speaking, you know, in the political sphere about what it, we would imagine as the good life today for people. Everything is about, oh, we need jobs. <laughs> We need more money, right? The, the, mm -hmm. These are the efforts. Never with, you know, the radical imagination. How can we imagine a qualitative leap right. in our our life, right? How can we imagine the possibility? Less yes, alienation. Yes, absolutely. Happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Increased get, passion, sexuality. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Just and don't have to go to the Greek address. islands for that, that's right? A, that's a, we, well, we that's what we have to do. Yeah, we have to mm. support the <laughs> the tourist industry, <laughs> which is about the last industry left, unfortunately, right. exactly. there. <laughs> so, so, so this yeah, is yeah, fascinating, yeah, these yeah. alternative formations. Yes, right. Outside the, the state party systems and... and uh, so again, how, how, who would be? Well, you're speaking do, about a movement. You're speaking um, right. really about real movement, you know, because okay. the, you know, what we what we're, we're dealing with, and I think, you know, I, I, I'm trying to put this in 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 terms of uh, physics. We're dealing with a very static situation, a kind of stasis in motion is the political system here. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 say, oh, there's a difference between Clinton and Trump. What difference is that? Just a couple of maybe appointees in the courts, and what what role, you know? would that really have in the future? Is that good enough reason to expend one's energies, right? <laughs> well, that's like, again some yes, of the rhetoric yeah, from right. the new of left. Of course, of course. Right? They, yes, the, I'm well aware of this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well aware so of this. So it's the, the liberals. The lesser evil. Our, the this lesser will be evil better for the we'll Supreme Court, et cetera. And, yes, right. 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 So, yeah. so yeah, please. Let me yeah. just throw in, and I know that Stanley, or correct me if I'm wrong, has been somewhat criticized for this. Um, to <sighs> dismiss the issue of race as much, I mean, um, blacks overwhelmingly are supporting Clinton, the Democratic Party. Right. How is this, the, the disenfranchised group, like the millions of, of, of American blacks, who seem to be very much wedded to the party. Mm -hmm. What does Stanley say about that? The, the civil rights movement, well, the, I mean, the working know, within the yeah. Democratic Party to get the voting rights bill, the civil rights bill, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Three, three years before he wrote this book, 2003, Stanley published a book called How Class Works, in which he articulates class not as only the class struggle between you know, those that have and the have-nots, or the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, or a more classical kind of Marxian analysis. But class is a movement, you know, is movement. And one of those movements in the, in the uh, 20th century was the black freedom movement. Right. Yeah. And this raises the question, is the Democratic Party really true to the ideals of the black freedom movement, or is this something that has happened, you know, within the churches, within the black right. churches, within the party apparatus, that the blacks only went to, you know, or Afro-Americans only went to the Democratic Party because of the tendencies of the Republican Party, right. that they were supported, voter For good registration. Reasons, Very though, good reasons, right? yes, okay. over the years. All yes, right. I mean, you know, look, a, 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 a Texan like Lyndon Johnson is the one that pushed through probably the most radical legislation we've had in the 20th century vis-a-vis -vis the questions of race the Voting Rights Bill of 65 and the Civil Rights Bill of 64. 
mm -hmm. and also then Medicaid, which, you know, at least got some medical help for, you know. So that partly uh, then uh, explains yes, right, right. this enormous attachment. Yes, but since when? See, this is the problem. You know, I can understand it if we're having this discussion right. in 68, or really for that maybe in 1980, like, you know, and, and, and Or even whatever. in 68, King yeah, was yeah. asked to run right, right. for president. He, right. he refused to. Right. He right. said, no, I've yeah. got to yeah. be outside the system. So, I, so I, he would be yeah. on board with Stanley yeah. on that. I don't see Stanley as denying the race issue or whether, you know, the, the, this at all. I think he's very well aware of it. I think the, the, the problem is, is unless you analyze this from the standpoint of class first, alongside of race, of course, that you're going to really miss part of, you know, what's going on and how you would build a new, a new party formation. You know, uh, and how you would build, a, you know, an alternative. If so you will. these alternative so the, forms yeah. would eventually yes. result in some well, other party. The black, the black freedom movement is very much like the feminist movement. It's static at this point. It doesn't have that next level of force, you know, in a way. And people are returning to kind of principles there. You know, uh, we, we, we had this we program had, with the Black um, Panther the, the Party Panther, right. that goes to Stanley Nelson, Stan Nelson documentary, documentary that we, uh, you know, who we interviewed. So this is a quite, these are, these are some of the moments in terms of, of uh, real class movements that have now become static. Because and of Black Lives system. Matter, of course, yes. has been a, a right. movement that has refused to right. uh, endorse any candidate. Yes, or party. at least so at this point. Yes, at this point. At this point. We'll see when, you know, November comes, or, Not sure. or maybe the mm -hmm. Philadelphia, you know, uh, convention, if you will, the, mm. the new Philadelphia convention. So, um, yeah, so I, I think that these are things that really have to be seriously engaged. I mean, of course, you know um, that uh, Michelle Alexander has written, you know, uh, uh, actively against the Hillary Clinton candidacy mm -hmm. and, the, and the, their, you know, the and Clinton's the, the, the uh, position vis-a-vis. Yeah, and, so. yeah, and, and that you have this from Liza Featherstone as a feminist mm -hmm. with the, the nation. You know, there are these attacks on, on the Clinton you know, presidency, particularly Hillary Clinton, that they have not been friends, you know, to the, to the black uh, uh, population or, and, and really have a very distantiated notion, if you will, of, of, of black freedom for, you know, towards no, the black agreed. freedom movement. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, it's still again... The question is, the question is, is where does this vote where go? Where does this go? Yeah, yeah, where does this vote go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, of course, it will go to Clinton. Yes. So... Again, Stanley's left turn mm -hmm. is the vehicle through which we can build these alternatives that can eventually what? Win? Well, the, I don't, yeah, what yeah, are we yeah, talking about? Yeah. We're, we're I mean, talking I think about we're talking about the building of an educational apparatus, okay. which is first and foremost. How do you do alternative schools? How do you begin to, you know, do alternative classes? You know, how, do you, how, how does one uh, take the aspect in the United States now that is so prevalent, and you, you know this as well mm -hmm. as uh, I do, uh, where education has become schooling and training and no longer education. Exactly. Certification, professionalization, and no longer has anything to do with thinking. So I think that's part of the party of thinking would be first and foremost. Another person who we, you know, the radical imagination is indebted to is Cornelius Castellanos, the Greek intellectual who's known in some circles in the United States, but not actively. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he said that, you know, the most crucial battle is in education. This is the war of position, and he articulates this in, in a, a, a book called The Imaginary Institution of Society. Starting at the very early yeah. grades, of course. Yes, starting at the very early grades. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. Are and, there schools yeah. that you can point to? Not that, really, not unfortunately. That no, no, yeah. okay. I mean, there's some private schools, <laughs> and when private the schools. kids are, you know, quote, encouraged towards creativity and the Montessori system, but there are very few. And, and again, what has been destroyed here over the last, and, you know, you can actually see the Democratic Party being very complicit in here in this, is the public school system. Yeah. You know, the public school the system, if you think about and this, and, and, you know, this is, you know, hinted at and sometimes articulated in, in Stanley's book, Left Turn, you know, back in the 1930s and 40s, you could get a first-class education. You're getting basically today's Stanford education in the humanities. You could have gotten City College for free. 
Yes, you would have had Thomas Mann teaching you literature, or at least lecturing. Albert Einstein lectured there. Yeah, makes sense. And, and mm. you built mm -hmm. alongside of the Communist Party USA, people like Sidney Finkelstein, who was a very good scholar in terms of literature. Shakespeare wrote books on jazz. Right? Okay. And, and, you know, on, on culture. So, so we have some historical, highly, highly concrete examples. We have very examples. historical good yeah. examples of this, right? And the union. Stanley also points to the early, the union involvement of which his family, have, you know, I'm, I'm sure maybe yes. there's part of this background for you, where the yeah. Jewish Daily Absolutely. Forward Absolutely. Was, was, was out there in, 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 in an active way. We don't have a newspaper. We have the Indy. The Independent, right? We don't have a, a weekly or a daily, and uh, you know. And he also calls for this in part of a program towards the future. You know, you would certainly need alternative educational institutions. You would need a newspaper, you know. Um, you know, and you would need, you know, shows like this one yeah. and shows like this. Shows of course, like this you know, one. you yeah. need a, of course, a media, media presence. So this this becomes uh, something that is very hard to do. You know, also um, it has to. I think avoid the sectarianism of the past, where you know sects are always arguing. You know, you'll get the the fourth international types, these types, etc. You know, you know, yeah. it has to be much more not only inclusive but open-ended. I think you know, without the old language of the of the past. You ask me, you know, what's different than the new left or what's different than earlier formations here? I think the you know the language has changed. You know, we have to begin to think about this in new terms. We live in the social logic of the derivative. <laughs> you know, we are subjected to, you know, probably the most abstract use of the m movement of money to capital back to money that we have ever witnessed in the history of capitalism. And this was designed, this is part of a, you know, over 40 years, you know, beginning in 1973, with the uh, options exchanges created in Chicago to trade futures on futures, you know, vis-a-vis -vis exactly. stocks, and then, of course, re-articulated in the uh, middle 90s by Blythe Masters as credit default swaps, which helped to create the housing bubble, you know, part of the new kind of marketing. So we have a whole new logic that's at, at stake here, too. We no longer are a manufacturing giant in the world. We have no industrial policy in the United States. We're not talking about building, you know, solar paneling factories on masse to get off of fossil fuels. I have not heard this from Bernie Sanders in terms of a program. So this Although is, this he is has interest. said He's talking about climate change as a major, a issue, major issue, but we but don't have a works progress. You know, you know in, in a strange way, really. he's a pre-New pre Deal. In, in, in a lot of ways, so we have to we have to look at this in a much more you know uh, I, I think much more um, um, sharper way uh, with with greater clarity about where we are in terms of effects of the system, you know I mean you have to remember the '60s of which a period you and I grow up in was a, was a period of somewhat of affluence. Right, we didn't have tremendous. No. Well, I mean, not, you know, not in my case. Yeah, but, no, no, but, I understand. Right. I understand. But, but I was I mean, able to go to state speak, school. You were able to go to school, and plus, you weren't faced with your no. rent going from seventy-five dollars a month to one hundred and fifty well, the next was, year. Right, right. <laughs> I think that was the rent. It wasn't double. Me, I know. Yeah. I remember renting yes, room. Of course, yeah, of course, but, of course. But, so you know, we had yeah, a very no, different true. economic situation true. and a very different spirit in the air. You know, expanding job market and. We weren't concerned about yes. that, and quite much frankly. of the much yeah. of the uh, the radicality of that period, both in the music and the art, in the literature, et cetera, has been thoroughly commodified and integrated into the system. Absolutely. So and we are living in a very reified, you know, period. And ruling reified. elites understood that and tightened yes, absolutely. The, the vice absolutely. and and, uh, and, and mm -hmm. attack that counterculture. Yes. yes. But now. Uh, and again, Cornell will be here with us at yes. some point. Yes. But let me bring in uh, this this terrific class he has taught, introduced at at, uh, at Union Theological, Radical Love. Okay. Transformative <laughs> justice, radical love, coming from. I know the what radical Christ is, but I don't know what love is well, yet. Yeah, oh, but anyway, I'm just you kidding. Agree, yeah, 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 of course, playing, it's yeah. part of our <laughs> right, DNA. Right, We're great, right, of course, right? of course. It's, it's yeah. Love and romance right. and poetry right. and so on. The Iliad. And the, right. Well, that was about war. But uh, yeah. that was about the love. It was of, about love. It was of, about of, love. Of, yeah, he of, went back to battle because to battle of the love of his friend. The love of his... Of Patroclus, Achilles. Yes, that's the story. And and But so 
the, um, the, the Christian prophetic and Jewish prophetic tradition, mm -hmm. we just, of mm -hmm. course, mourn the, uh, the passing of, of Bar Daniel yeah. Berrigan, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. who was very fond of, of referring to the prophetic tradition mm -hmm. as, uh, in particular. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so what role does Stanley see in that? In, in identification at, at this deep moral, spiritual level, if you will, with the disenfranchised, mm -hmm. with the other, mm -hmm. in trying to bridge the, 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 uh, the gaps between people that, mm -hmm. that you so articulately mm -hmm. have told us. Well, I'd love it happening. if he was here to respond to that because well, yeah, I feel right, very that's, awkward but, going there. But in, in some but, ways, you know, Stanley is, is really dealing at the level of theory most of his time, you know, in, in, in a way. So, um, you know, theoretically speaking, I think that, uh, you know, obviously Stan is, Stanley has enormous empathy, right, for, and you know, the, the class and love. He yes, he does, yes, yes, yes. A lefty who can and does expect his, express his love. Yes, absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, and the passion is there. And so yes. we want to Moral, cultivate. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, well, in terms of the, if, it, if we think of that as traditional morality for Stanley no. and certainly for myself, I think the morality sometimes has very limited, you know, uh, has limited the left in a lot of sense the, to get into just the moral arguments, et cetera. That's and an interesting it, it question. Has, has kind right. of blinded, you know, the, the vision if you will, of what's actually going on and then what is, 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 is possible. Obfuscates the yes, argument. So, so yes. when we yes. say, well, you wouldn't go so far as say capitalism is presently constructed as an immoral economic system, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't it make sense. It's a system. We know it. It's, it's based system. on corruption. That corrupts. What else is new that it has corruption? I mean, I'm astonished to learn we're going to have a category on our website for the Institute of the Radical Imagination. I was astonished to learn. And all of these things will be sort of self-evident to, you know, the, the radical but is mind. It, you know? But I'm, I'm, are we missing yeah. a dimension that's so important, the politics of meaning? Yes. and how people do make sense out of what's happening to them. Um, and, and, and to go back to a spiritual tradition that did also debunk mm -hmm. the state, if you will, mm -hmm. the, the, the Catholic Church, the, uh, <coughs> the, the establishment, the religious establishment. Right. Isn't that what Berrigan really was, yes. was um, about, yeah, sure, in a sense. Sure. I mean, I think you could take a, a concept and categories such as uh, such as alienation okay. and really speak about alienation as having multiple components. And one, of course, would be the spiritual alienation that we live without a metaphysical center. We live without a, a compass, if you will. Um, the notion of God has been dead in philosophy really since the Enlightenment, and then the well, hammer came absolutely. down with Marx and Nietzsche in a different different the ways, nihilism. And, and certainly the the psychoanalytic moment. Uh, the nihilism may have may have developed. I mean, for some philosophers, and this is you know could be fodder for a, a, a kind of sh good show on what is nihilism or uh, nihilism. Um, is that uh, for, for some, a thinker like Nietzsche, nihilism is the result of a very long Christian tradition. You know, that mm -hmm. it only can have the will to nothing at the end of the journey. And he tries to show this logically as you, as you go forward. You know, this is of course coming from a highly atheistic philosopher right. who wants us to go beyond the value systems in which we have been constructed, including the Judaic Christian codes. You know, this is so what does he leave us with? And he leaves us with a horizon only. <laughs> to work yeah, with. Yes. And, 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 right. and people. But it may be a free horizon in a different way. We don't know. We don't but, know. But yeah. to deal with that catastrophic yeah. Yeah. trauma. Yes that so right. many people are yes, no, dealing with today. Yeah, yeah. I think, and, and searching for that, I think you put it as the, yeah. the, the moral compass, or mm -hmm. what does is, what is the new le the, uh, left turn <laughs> tell us about that? Don't you think that's, that's an important dimension? 
Well, of life. I mean, it can be used as an important dimension. I mean, for me, when a John Coltrane, you know, as a jazz musician, begins to talk about a spiritual odyssey in his music, it takes on a very different dimension of the word spiritual. You know, for for you know, persons like me who are not, you know, especially uh, believers or really adherents of that, this is about a, you know. A, a kind of only spiritual alienation, you know, for materialist but thinkers. It was anyway. for him, right? Yes, He's it a was very at spiritual a certain level. Yes. Man. Yes, yes. And, yes. and a, a, a yes. real believer in yes. the sort of uh, radical love we're right. talking about. Right. And, and, and sort of that's love supreme. Yes, of course. Of um, course. Yeah. So that's why I use him as an example. So I know, we can, I know. We can, very good. You know, very good. Okay. <laughs> so, so work with Coltrane that. Coltrane is certainly yeah. part of good. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. wonderful. We can work with that. Yeah. But uh, go, going back to Stanley's yeah. work, I sure. mean, this is a materialistic account of, of, of a left turn. How do you, you know, forge a new, new uh, uh, political future? So I'll, I'll give you an example, I mean, if you will. You know, most of the schools, as you know, are, are constructed around, we have to give equal weight to creationism, and yeah, evolution. Fair and balanced. Yes, yes, fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. Or you all know, ideas are if equal. evolution is brought up in the schools, right? It's never done through a reading and through the method of how Darwin comes to these discoveries, you know, in, in, in a sense. So what we're what we're always fighting, if you will, is this kind of pedagogy that may produce this need, <laughs> if you right. will, yeah, right, for right. spiritual reconcil reconciliation. It's never fully than, satisfied. It's never really fully satisfied. And secondly, of all, the understanding is not there in the beginning because of the, you know, the educational system that does not take the kids the to Central Park and let's say, yeah. let's talk about how he proved this. What did he discover? What are these relations going on, which is part of a, you know, a new scientific method? And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of your audience knows this, but, um, or of the audience here, um, that in um, 1859, when The Origin of Species came out, both Marx and Engels were completely, uh, you know, uh, taken yeah. by this, and Marx wanted to dedicate yeah. capital to, to Charles Darwin. Absolutely. So you have, you know, on the one hand, a, a kind of scientific, you know, socialism, scientific being, an, uh, you know, what, what does that mean? What does this scientific dialectic mean? And also at the same time, what does the dialectic mean in terms of thinking through the origin of the species? What mm -hmm. is species being? Et cetera. So this has a very long tradition, and I mean, it's it's certain. I'm, I'm certainly open to a discussion. You know, I mean, Hegel, the philosopher who definitely in, influenced Marx in the beginning, you know, speaks of spiritual alienation, and it is in the early Hegel writings, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Marx doesn't go there so far, you know, in, in his economic and philosophical manuscripts. But it, at least to me, it's a very interesting concept to begin with when one wants to talk about the spiritual dimension. You know, it's Absolutely. a word that has, you know, uh, in, in German, it really means to estrange. You know, you feel so distant. You also materially are without lean. You're without, you know, any kind of claim to pr property or to mm. propriety. You know, mm -hmm. something that you can call your own. So this yeah. is a very interesting, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, long, long, long discussion. You know, it is. We it could is. have, you know, um, and, uh, yeah. And, and as, uh, as you're talking, I'm yeah, thinking yeah, of yeah. Um, someone we've had on this show, James Gilligan, mm -hmm. <coughs> who's done some <coughs> really uh, <coughs> groundbreaking work <coughs> excuse me, on the <coughs> issues of shame and humiliation right. and dis disrespect <coughs> and, and psychological causes of, of violence. Um, and trying to cultivate a data-based mm -hmm. social science mm -hmm. where we can see education, for example, mm -hmm. which he's actually done as, as director of mental hygiene in the Department of Corrections mm -hmm. at, at, in, in Massachusetts for over 20 years. Over 20 years of providing for college-based education in those in that prison to some of the most violent mm -hmm. inmates. Mm -hmm. The recidivism rate mm -hmm. literally was zero mm -hmm. versus the 70%. Mm -hmm. and, and again, as he's been pointing out, we need to deal with a, the, such deep-rooted alienation, self-hatred, 
Right. And this comes out of Adorno's authoritarian personality work and so on. And, and um, the, the necessity to get people to feel that they are still alive, that they are worthy uh, of, of life in, in, in one sense that right. that that is is so much of an issue in, in advanced uh, right capitalism interesting here that yeah. you're talking there's about a um, there's a philosopher in um, in um, I think I mentioned him on uh, one show um, uh, I think when we were with uh, Phelps at the beginning oh, yeah. of this uh, journey yeah. uh, his name is Bernard Stiegler yeah. and uh, this is someone who actually uh, was in a French prison for five or six years, and he took up the study of philosophy and now has become one of the world's leading, you know, philosophers concerning technology. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he speaks to, to this, this of feeling of that people do no longer have any kind of auto-affection. They Absolutely. don't really like themselves. And this is part of a real, a real problem. And he actually calls for a new form of primordial auto-affection which is even stronger and, and needed in the human being than primary narcissism where you actually like yourself and you like what you see in terms of the imaging. So it's very interesting and he sees a root there that we're so again so far away uh, from from uh, you know uh, knowing at least even surface kind of self-love you know at this point and you know you know better than I do the levels of depression among young people the suicides that are, you know, are occurring, you know, the emphasis upon, you know, treating men mental illness and prisoners with drugs, you know, as this mm -hmm. becomes a, a grand experiment of big pharma, right? And, yeah. you know, they're all too ready in the system. But I think we should always keep this dialectic open between, you know, the system and its effects, the system and the alienation that it's producing and continually trying to make those connections dialectically instead of just saying this is a result that we've gotten here you know uh, i think we have to continually talk about that you know uh, uh, you know brecht once said it's amazing during periods of economic hardship or depressions that more people don't rob banks yeah and you have to ask how does this mechanism you know start or wilhelm reich the people say give me less bread and more taxes how does this occur <laughs> How does this yeah. occur? You Which know, is I mean, yeah, a, yeah, the questions yeah, we get asked yeah, today, yeah, of yes, course. Right, right. Why aren't why mm -hmm. don't we see more righteous indignation? Right. Or even more uh, levels of, of right. social deviance. Right. So our uh, next project, going just okay. going back to Please the radical do. imagination, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Stanley, we're we're going to be doing a, a long study of techniques of servitude. We call it. How do these techniques and how do they become part of every life that create a, a, a kind of willing slaves of, of capital? How do we have this? It used to be happy slaves. Now we have willing slaves all too ready to, hmm. you know, participate in this, you know. And how to break charade, out of this And how do you cycle. break out of it? But and you have to understand the disciplinary techniques and the... And, and how, how did this happen? And we're talking about trying to go beyond, if, if possible, Foucault and others who have studied this vis-a-vis -vis the prison system, vis-a-vis -vis mental illness and the anti-psychiatry movements of the past. And, you know, and certainly in the United States, we've had a lot of people that have, that have uh, uh, done this too. And, uh, but we don't have, you know, again, this research capability, this is another thing that Stanley, you know, speaks about um, in, in this book. Um, we don't really have uh, the, 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 the capacity because we're not funded heavily. There's so many people on the left, and as you know, most of the teachers are not at Yale or at Union Theological like Cornell or at Stanford where the money is to do research. Most people are teaching community college levels or yeah. you know second and third tier colleges, and these are where all the radicals are. So there's no time, sure. you know, time has been stolen in an interesting way. So, you know, um, you know, we have many colleagues that are across New York City, but they're all teaching, you know, eight to 10 courses mm -hmm. a year to make a living, to piece together a living or, or a part of their contract. So this is another issue. What has capitalism done? The latest thing it steals from us is, is our sleep. It's stolen all our time. It stole most our of fantasy, our time through it. So this is something we have to think. And yes, right, right. Our health, yes, right. our environment, yeah, you name it. So if we can articulate our again souls, to a new, new generation, 
you know, part of the Sandinista, Sandinistas, yeah. or part of this new, quote, political revolution, and articulate a, quote, unquote, political revolution in terms of it's really about taking back your life, taking time back, <laughs> you know, your precious time as a human being. Uh, I'm sure you planet. notice this, this when you talk to your yeah. students. Yes, I do, all the Same. time. It's, yes. it's yeah. And there, this was a problem with Occupy. It never really framed this beyond the economic, in my opinion. It never framed it existentially. How about you know, Black, Li Black Lives Matter? I don't, I don't I, there, you know, not? I'm not an expert on that, but I, I see that is, you know, the, the, to me, uh, you know, it, it's good that the, that movement is happening and it's a political movement, but at the same time, are they really talking about the existential, you know, um, dimension? In, in, in a way. Is this really part of what's going on or is it about economics only uh, once again? Is it only about this? You in know, the environmental uh, movement. In the environmental movement. Yeah. The linkages still right. haven't been the made. The linkages have not been made. And, and this is another thing to go back to the book uh, is yeah. that, that um, to Stanley's book, he, he says what we've lost is the ability to think totalities. We have lost the ability, the, the postmodern, if you will, became a single issue political movement. So we may so win in terms of, uh, you know, LBGT uh, rights, right? right? Yeah. But identity we politics. may win, you know, uh, same sex marriages, et cetera, identity politics. But is that really a win to the whole whole picture? Does this right. really create a new kind of movement? One so issue a, sort of pressure yeah, groups. Yeah. yeah. Which again, right. don't, as you say, right. don't get right. the totality. And he has a very good chapter in here. I recommend people reading this book. I think it's very timely. You know, we've had two authors. We had my turn last week with Henwood on the Hillary Clinton presidency and, and Stanley's book, which is very timely in terms of the political future. We're, Tell we're us where your, th these lectures, these classes are being held. Um, we do uh, classes on... Um, on um, uh, Saturdays at the National Writers Union on 38th Street, 256 oh, okay. West 38th Street, we between 12 noon until 6 o'clock. We're doing one on the Trump uh, presidency and Wilhelm Reich, well, Mass Psychology of Fascism and the Trump presidency. And another one is a kind of review of uh, the French structuralist tradition. And we have a good, good audience. We're having about 40 people, 45 people, some of whom have been on the left activists, but a lot of young people who are now curious about ideas. So this has been a, a very good thing. And uh, we're starting one tomorrow night called uh, the, Impossible, the Impossible Community. Uh, which will be our friend John Clark's uh, d discussing his book about another kind of forging of a, of, of a political future. The impossible and Community. The Impossible Community, which is a which play is what, on now? two books, uh, uh, one written by uh, um, John Locnancy, a French philosopher, uh, entitled The Inoperative Community, and then um, um, another book called Community at Its Ends. Yeah, and you're going to have... He, We're going to have John on next week. On uh, next, next week. Next week, okay. we'll be talking about the impossible That'll community. That'll be terrific, yeah. So we're looking That'll forward be. to that. The possibility of impossibility, as philosophers like to talk, the consciousness of another consciousness, and, and, and go That's on, and hopefully we, we raise it to the level of where it becomes a material practice. Yeah. And the week so after you... The week after we're going to have gonna for uh, right before the left forum we're going to have uh, Dan uh, Yoriakas, uh, a Greek who wrote the famous book I Do Mind Dying about Detroit and the up revolutionary upsurge in Detroit, especially among the uh, black workers at the at the UAW and uh, you know certain radical politics that, that happened in Detroit. Uh, we're going to talk about Detroit and the reconstitution of that city, the devastation, and now the hedge fund reconstitution. Kristen Lawler will be here as well. She's very interested mm -hmm. in labor mm -hmm. movements, who is uh, with us. And Peter Bratzis and myself will talk about Athens, and I will talk about my own research on what I call the movement from disaster to boutique capitalism, with New Orleans being the prime example, the mm. reconstruction after Katrina. And then we'll so, try yeah, and do... Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, a show on the panel I'm doing on yes. Dark Money, Jane yes. Mayer. Where you're going book, today? Where I'm going yes. yeah, today yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. for an right. event with right. that will feature uh, James Gilligan and Carl Hart, the yes. neuroscientist right. at Columbia, the drug researcher and advocate of uh, ending the drug wars and so on. Um, they'll be there as, as well right. as our 
one of our many co-hosts, <laughs> because right. this is a collective yes, venture. Yes, it is. It is. Absolutely. And Moral Technique will be there. And, okay, and, fantastic. And yeah. again, our honorary, one of <laughs> our major honorary co-hosts, Cornell West, will be here in the very near future with, with Stanley. With yes. Stanley. And we can talk and, about the book and, and, that, and uh, with the, the direct author and one of his absolutely. one of his early students, students. and colleagues. Absolutely. And Cornell used to take the subway to go hear Stanley lecture on the Frankfurt School and they would stay up late at night at Tom's restaurant on the Upper West Side. Which is still one of still the few there. places yeah. that you can yeah. go to. A good Greek diner. A good Greek di <laughs> diner that doesn't right. charge right. like whatever. For Absolutely. $18 yes. for a couple of eggs. Exactly. But listen, we're, we're, yeah. we're just about out of time here. Yes. We, we yeah. are now, as you said, in our seventh, seventh month for month. the Radical yeah. Imagination. And we've we, covered a waterfront. We've, we've covered, covered the a waterfront. lot of topics. Yeah. And uh, Black we're Lives on the Matter, front. Transformative Justice, Greek and Puerto Rican Death. The, and, the and presidential Jen, campaign, so, right? And we'll continue to do that. Absolutely. And, and we thank you all so much for uh, listening to us and being supportive of this program. And I thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, thank you, very, Jim, very as much. As usual, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do it again. We'll, we'll, do, it again we'll do, do it again very, very soon. We'll do a review. Soon. Right. We'll do a review <laughs> again. And right. thank you so much. And all of you, have a great week. We'll see you next week. This is Jim Reynolds wishing you the best. And we'll see you next week on The Radical Imagination.